This is Colerenebri, New South Wales, Australia. Colerenebri has a population of about 400 people. It may have been a very different place if it wasn't for something that didn't happen 110 years ago, nine miles away. Welcome to Pocketaroo. Pocketaroo is home to about 20 people and consists of an intersection surrounded by a few farms. Pocketaroo is most famous for something it doesn't have anymore, a railway station. This is the only train you're likely to see in Pocketaroo now. The Pocketaroo railway line opened in 1906 and closed in 1974. It was the terminus of a branch line that broke off the Walgett line at Burren Junction, carrying freight and passenger services. When this station was opened, it was originally named Colorindabri, and 10 days later was renamed to Colorindabri East to differentiate it from another station that was planned, the one that was supposed to be in Colorindabri, nine miles down that road. Proposals for a railway extension to Colerenebri were first put forth in 1897. In 1898, a meeting of the Colerenebri Railway League chose to honour visitors from the sectional committee of the Parliamentary Public Works Department with a banquet, at which prominent local residents presented their case as to why Colerenebri should have its own railway station. They must have put forth a good argument because in 1902, primary construction began on the line, which broke off the Mungadai line at Narrabri and headed west. The line was completed in 1903 to Burren Junction, at which point a political feud began between the people of Walgate Walgett and Colerenebri. Walgett, Colerenebri and Burren Junction roughly form a triangle. The distance from Burren Junction to Walgett and the distance from Burren Junction to Colerenebri are roughly the same. All three towns are within the same local government area, so the idea was to complete all of the railway works as efficiently and quickly as possible. Once the earthworks were completed to Walgett, the work crews were reassigned to build the earthworks for the Colerenebri branch line, but this resulted in loud protests from the people of Walgett, who felt their line should be completed first because it had been started first. In response to Walgett's, and I quote, hysterical outbursts, Colerenebri responded, the Colerenebri district indignantly protests against the dog-in-a-manger attitude of Walgett and demands fair play, its claim being at least equal to Walgett. Colerenebri railway station opened in 1906, right here in Pocketaroo, nine miles from the actual town of Colerenebri. After the construction of 150 miles of track from Narrabri, the decision to continue the Colerenebri branch line into Colerenebri was cancelled, just nine miles from the town. The people of Walgett didn't get their railway station until 1908, two years after Colerenebri station opened. Walgett, however, may have had the last laugh because Walgett station, while it did open two years later, was at least located in the town it serviced. The Minister for Works has informed the member for the district that he had finally decided to make the terminus of the railway at a point nine miles from here. Nine miles may not seem like much now, but in 1906, with no cars, poorly maintained roads, and obviously no public transport, nine miles might as well have been 9,000 miles for the people of Colerenebri. They were not happy. People are highly indignant at the decision. Earthworks at an enormous cost have been completed right into the town and are now being destroyed by rabbits and travelling stock. It failed, apparently, not because the minister considered the Nine Mile Point a satisfactory terminus, but because it had been represented, or rather misrepresented to him, that the people of the district would be satisfied with the line to that point. That they should be so satisfied is obviously absurd, because anything like permanency in the Nine Mile Terminus simply spells ruin to all the interests of the town. And of course, the local rivalry between Walgett and Colerenebri continued. The Walgett branch of the same line is being completed, notwithstanding the fact that the line does not pay. The Colerenebri line does pay and always will. It is therefore not asking too much to expect the paying line to be completed as well as the non-paying one. Having passenger and freight trains out this far was a huge boon to the area, but the real benefit to the new railway was the transport of stock and grain. Colerenebri is the centre for a bunch of huge farms and grazing areas. It still is to this day, and is literally the centre. It's in the middle of all of them, and it has all of the local services that a town provides. In 1910, though, a farmer that was located on the other side of Colerenebri, away from the railway station, would have to walk his stock, there were no vehicles at this point, all the way into Colerenebri, and then the remaining nine miles out the other side to the railway station to load his sheep onto the train. It gets stupidly hot here in summer, and the nearest reliable water supply to the railway station was Rowan Creek some five miles away, and the creek was often dry. The only river is in Colerenebri. Sheep often died just getting to the train. For graziers and farmers, the location of this railway station was a disaster. 
A couple of dry months in the summer will, by failure of the water supply, demonstrate in no uncertain way the arguments that have been adduced. The pumping of water a distance of three and a half miles to supply large flocks of travelling sheep and cattle from such a precarious source as exists for the nine-mile terminus can at best be most unsatisfactory, and is certain to end in disaster for the unfortunate owner whose sheep happen to be on hand when the water or the pumping plant fails. There is no such danger at Colour and Abri, for the River Barwon contains an inexhaustible supply. In 1928, a proposal was raised to extend the line to at least the eastern bank of the Barwon River, utilising the existing earthworks already constructed and removing the need to construct a substantial rail bridge over the river. But it didn't happen. There's not much left of Pocketaroo Station today. All that remains is the platform edge at the loading bank, a hump of dirt where the main station building used to sit, and the base of a large jib crane. The terminus of the line is marked by a wooden buffer stop, which is now almost entirely rotted away. If you look on Google Maps, you can still see evidence of the earthworks that were completed 110 years ago and never had tracks laid on them. From the end of the line at Pocketaroo Station, the line crosses the Burren Junction Collar and Abri Road, before continuing across a ploughed field to the south and north embankments of what would have been the rail bridge over Grawan Creek. The north embankment is now being used as the backstop for the local shooting range. This is the road bridge over Grawan Creek, built in 1934. Presumably if the railway line had continued, the rail bridge would have been somewhat similar to this. It's not entirely clear where the line would have continued from here. It's quite likely it would have continued around, crossing the Guaida Highway and Barwon River on what would have been another substantial rail bridge, before probably curving over and following the Collar and Abri Mungandai Road into town. Pocketaroo Station closed in 1975, along with the rest of the branch line from Burren Junction. The last train carried passengers to the station in 1974. Had the line continued into the town of Collar and Abri, as it was planned, it's entirely possible that the town may have ended up a major population centre in the northwest. So I suppose the relevant question now is why should you care about this? It's an interesting exploration of the butterfly effect and how a single decision in the past can have lasting repercussions in the future. I mentioned earlier that Collar and Abri has a population of about 400. 387 is the actual figure. Walgett currently has a population of 2,267. Back in 1906 and 1908, when the Collar and Abri and Walgett railway stations opened, both towns had populations of about 500 people, so you can directly see the effect over time of having convenient access to railway in the era before motor vehicles. It's interesting to consider how different things might have been if the line had just been nine miles longer. If you found this interesting, you might want to consider subscribing. You might want to check out the tour of the Deb Set Restoration, a 1950s air-conditioned passenger train being restored by volunteers. Very cool stuff. There'll be more videos in future, and I imagine you might like those too. Thank you for watching. From such a precarious... <laughs> 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 <laughs>